Hello everyone and welcome to my place on the internet where I am your host Peter aka the Mutt Shop Guy where I avoid social media like the plague by playing a mobile gacha game on my phone that allows me to collect big chunky dudes. Huh, I guess my husband was kind of right when he said that I should probably go see a therapist. Maybe I should actually go see a therapist. Flawless segue. Well as you guys are pre- Clued in by this opening skit that, you know, one, your boy doesn't know how to do these skits, and two, yes, I'm going to be talking about a mobile game. In particular, a mobile game that is pretty significant when it comes to the Japanese market. Why? Well, besides it being a gacha game, and that's being one of the most popular things from Japan in terms of mobile games, but this is its first commercially successful LGBT themed gacha game. And not only that, but the most important, in my opinion, detail about this game is that the characters are drawn in the Bara art style. Yes, yes, yes! Calm down, get a hold of yourself! Yes, please, let me handle this. I'm gonna get out of here! Yes, as you guys are hearing from me right now, yes, you'll get big, chunky dudes that we've been wanting for so long, and we finally got it. And now I get to present to you this wonderful gacha game known as Tokyo After School Summoner. Wait, this is how you market to your Western audience? No, 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 no. Give us the original one. The original one's way better. Check this out. Yeah, now that was a good opening. Am I right? Eh? Eh? No? No? Okay. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably asking me the question, what is this game all about? So allow me to kind of break it down for you. So first of all, it is a free to play card based mobile gacha RPG that is for both iOS and Android. Not only that, it does have a turn based combat system using character cards with a rock, paper, scissors balance construct using an element system. And of course, these characters have buffs and nerfs based on an affinity system as well as their weapon choice. Um, okay. Yes, this game does have a story that it follows, and it's relatively just like any visual novel. So yes, you're, you're pretty much just going to be like playing a visual novel while also having a combat system in it. Which to me, that's, that's fine. At least it changes things up instead of just reading and clicking all the way through. A few moments later. So yes, it started at the late end of 2016 and with enough push from the Western market asking for an official English translation in 2018, we finally got it and here we are nearly three years later with having a fully detailed wikia page that gives you all the side quest option translations and everything you need to know about the game as well as a burgeoning subreddit community that has just been growing exponentially with every passing month. It's free real estate. So. Allow me to first break down the synopsis of the story. Gather close that you might hearken the story of Tokyo After School Summoners. The story begins with you assuming the role of the protagonist, which does not have a default name, so don't ask me. You arrive to Tokyo during the evening time in the middle of the park as a human transient, which is very unique in the story. You then encounter a summon called Salomon, or Sal for short and he goes about being the expositional piece that explains how to go about using this mysterious application that's taking Tokyo by storm. Yes! Yes! You then meet your first human, Ryota, as he's being chased down by an ogre. Yeah! And you fight it using your sacred artifact that you apparently had with you since the beginning because reasons. A wizard did it. <laughs> After learning the combat system through this crash course system of fighting an ogre, you go with Ryota to the academy that he's staying at because you learn that as a transient you have to enroll as a student because that's one of the rules that they have for transients. Yeah, I know this all sounds very convoluted, but trust me, we're gonna get there. I have so many questions! What follows is what one would expect from any typical manga slash anime story to go, with various hijinks that develop into an overarching plot. 
We learn more about the 23 portals that has opened in all the wards in Tokyo, and the mystical beings called transients that enter from them. These transients reflect various mythologies and folklore from all around the world, with special laws that entails how Tokyo handles them, most of which are students. Wait, what? We learn about the mysterious app and the sacred artifacts carried by its users, each of these having a role within a hierarchy and each of them governing a rule, which do affect the outcome of the battles they get themselves into. We learn more about the guilds and how they operate as we meet more members of other guilds. First we meet the Berserkers Guild, then the Missionaries Guild, then the Tycoons, among others of course. The guilds have their own respective territories within Tokyo by maintaining control of their gate, which is a portal. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. As the story progresses, we see them fight for power with gaining control of another gate. These events start causing exceptions to occur. An exception is caused when two opposing roles clash and the app is unable to process the hierarchy of these two opposing roles. To resolve this issue, the players that caused the exception must settle which rule and role in hierarchy. We also learn through a very, very wide breadth of characters that the sacred artifacts being carried by their users are also carrying the memories of the previous wielders. These characters all have some tie to you due to the previous wielder in one way or another. Gay! We finally learn that there is a cycle that Tokyo has been in for a very long time and that it keeps repeating itself because it's inevitable according to certain players. This brings in the higher guilds that are trying to gain control of the player. That means you. What? I knew it. Stop letting him make you realize stuff. For their own personal gain. Well, since now we have gotten that, I will give you just a quick rundown about the combat system. The combat system is pretty straightforward. With character cards you get to form into a team, different perks from different characters being either buffs or debuffs that can be used to great effect. And it's a turn based with the strategy needed to maximize the capabilities of your team. Oh, yeah. You move your team members about a prefix board, either being a 3x3, a 5x3, or even a 7x7, while facing the opposing team that may have more or less players. Each character has different styles of combat, ranging from short range blow attacks to range attacks that are either firearms or magic. Now you also have different variants of each character, ranging from rarity by star system that is typical in any gacha game. This combat also works off an infinity system, where the player basically forms relationships with the characters to gain better buffs and debuffs from the affected characters. Just as a little side note, you don't have to have those characters fall in love with the protagonist, you can actually form loving relationships with other characters if that makes any sense. Just wanted to clarify that if that wasn't so clear. Well, thank you. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you really need to know when it comes to certain parts of it. Yes, this the story is very much like a visual novel. You do get a choice where you actually have certain things affect the general flow of the story, but it pretty much just keeps repeating itself, essentially. I'm not going to go any more further into the story because there's just so much in the story to talk about, and there, there's just way too much more about talking about this. So. Five minutes later. One certain things I will certainly say is that when it comes to the characters, yeah, you're going to see that it's mostly leaning towards males, but not only that, that you're going to see a lot of kimono characters. Yes! That's awesome! Which, yes, again, I'm going to stress the fact that people do want to discern between kimono and just furry. I, I, I'm just trying to be respectful here. Bless you. <laughs> So yeah, most of the, you're gonna see that all the all the male characters are in the bar art style, which yes, that's exactly what we all want because that's why we're here. Yes, definitely. However, I will certainly say that the female characters also look absolutely fabulous with their outfits and also their rather promiscuous looks. I can't lie to myself that it's not also bad to look at either. <laughs> this guy. But there's some other things that you're going to learn that yeah, pretty much the characters don't really have a sexual preference and that's kind of the open interpretation thing for the game. Not only that, a lot of the uh, characters that you're going to encounter have a lot of different entwining backstories that actually lends more, more material to the entire game overall. Six and a half hours later. So I'm sure a lot of you are probably asking me, well, why is this so huge? Why is this so important? Again, like I said in the, the very, very beginning, 
that this is the first major LGBT plus game that is successful on a commercial level in Japan. This shows one to the Japanese market that yes, they, it's commercially successful, it's profitable and it's sustainable. But secondly, with enough attention coming from here in the West, we might actually get more stuff out of it. You know, maybe like an anime series? Just saying? Praying to God right now? Please somebody make my anime with the bar of characters in it. I just want my big chunky dudes. Calm yourself, boy. You are acting hysterical. Okay, after I take a nice small break from that. The other thing I also just want to say is that this game is also focusing on using gay Komi artists to make their characters regardless of respective character archetypes within it. So you're not only getting just gay Komi artists like gay, you know, like Takame or Jiraiya, no, 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 no. We're, we're getting other ones. You know, we're also getting female artists drawing in here, which some of them actually do kind of resemble a lot of the uh, Yuri aesthetic. And that makes me very, very happy because it's showing that these particular artistic styles are not bound to the, you know, the traditional bindings of the genre type thing, you know. We, we are showing that these can be put together and that they can cross those kind of boundaries and that's what we want. Yes, yes, yes! And of course, one of the major things is it really does show how marketable LGBT plus material is, especially coming to Japan, which at the time of this recording, we just recently heard about the, the same sex marriage ban being uplifted and overturned in, in Japan. So another step that could possibly bring us more of this stuff. And I just, I just want more. Enough already, you can stop. Okay. Sorry about that. I know I get a little carried away and it's probably cringe to some people, but you know what? I, I'm embracing myself. I embrace who I am. You don't care. I don't care. There you go. You're learning, my friend. You're learning. So another huge key point I want to point out when it comes to why is it so important to support this game is that it's, again, you're showing stuff to the industry. You're showing and providing data that this is something that people do want and that there is a very big audience for it. Not only that is that as much as I hate to say it, to show that it is profitable. Ugh. Not only that is that this game is starting to get translated into other languages because the people asked for it. Enough people asked for it. And that's, that's a huge key factor to me is that this game has shown me that it stands as a testament that there is a market in the Western world for this genre. And that gives me immensely a huge amount of hope for this genre that I want way more substance on. So at the end of the day, what should you do? If you're somebody like me who wants more gay Komi material, especially when it comes to having big chunky dudes as your protagonists and main characters of the story, then you should play the crap out of this game. All right, all right, all right. Not only that, do other things that show that there's interest in this game. You know, there are plenty of people making fan art. Join the subreddit that people have made to help. There's even a wiki page to help you with all the untranslated stuff because that's how important to have this stuff. Yes, I will certainly tell you this right now that the main story is translated and a lot of the side questing or side quest stuff and the, the, the love relationship quest stuff has not been translated yet. However, due to the wonderful diligent people who want to spread the love of this particular genre, have made a wiki to help people know what what it is that they're reading you could also do the tap to translate app feature stuff that people have you know the eye translate and all that stuff though it's not really as accurate as like using the wiki so i can understand if you're somebody who's on their phone and can't look at the wiki and the phone at the same time i, I know however you can use any computer even if you're at work just, just yeah three days later. So I'm sure some of you are probably asking me the questions, uh, is there any particular characters or anything that I, that stands out to me about this game? Well, besides one, I actually really do like the story. I really do like its progression. I felt like the stakes in it are really strong, but there are just certain characters that just really speak to me. Uh, particularly, um, this one, this, this one, he just, uh, yes. Stop it. 
Get some help. And to all my furry audience members, if you're asking me if there's any of them in the kimono category that really speak to me, well, what, what can I say? I really do like bears. Your music's bad and you should feel bad. Yeah, that was a terrible joke. That, that wasn't good. That wasn't good at all. Many months later. So yes, at the end of the day, I do highly hope people who are interested in this particular genre, please go download this game and play it. Show your support to it. Yes, there is ways to purchase stuff in the game. Just like any gacha game, you can buy a bunch of stones so you can do more gacha pulls. I will certainly tell you from my experience of playing this game, I've gotten as far as I have purely on free to play. So it's not that hard to actually amass of very decent sized collection of characters upgraded and all relatively easily on the free to play stuff but if you do want to accelerate yourself you do have in-game purchases that you can do so kudos to that hey that's pretty good but yeah i think that pretty much just covers everything i needed to cover about this game yes if I get enough people asking me, I will come back and talk about certain aspects of this game. If you want me to divulge more into the story thoroughly, I will do that. If you guys want me to do character showcases about these certain characters within this game, I will do that too. There is enough material to talk about all these characters and it, in my opinion, it's actually really, really great. And again, please go show support to these artists and to this so we can get more of this material. For God's sakes, we need more of this. All right, all right, I get it. But yep, that's pretty much all I have to say on this episode. Thank you so much for everybody who's watched us listen to my episodes so far. I know it's been a little hectic trying to get some of these episodes out. I'm trying my best. I really, really am. I'm sorry, but I'm trying. I'm trying. So... If you guys like what I'm doing, please follow me on my social media that I have linked down below. I'm I'm kind of okay, I, I guess. I've been told on a different podcast that I'm pretty cringy, so if I'm cringy to you, then sorry, I guess that's who I am. Stuff your sorries in a sack, bro. Okay. It's not your fault. Okay. But yep, that's pretty much all for my episode. Thank you so much for listening slash watching, and I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Uh, bye bye